Hey there, Evan Siliason here, founder of the Northwest School of Aromatic Medicine. And with the fall energies coming in uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, the leaves starting to change color outside and um, uh, that magical feeling coming more to life. Uh, I always feel this pull this time of year to delve back into the um, kind of wizardy kind of teachings around plant medicine and healing and uh, uh, the philosophies that really speak to people the loudest this time of year through the language of nature and the you know changing of the elements. And sp specifically for me, autumn is when the wisdom of Western alchemy starts coming up to the surface the most. And um, you know, when I put the most time in to continue my, my studies, my lifelong studies and exploration of this esoteric tradition and the more magical teachings of plants and aroma. Uh, so this morning, I just wanted to share a, a brief perspective that changed just a lot for me in my younger days as a budding herbalist, aromatherapist, incense crafter, and um, that's the ancient alchemical philosophy of aroma and the sense of smell. Uh, if you're not familiar with the tradition of Western alchemy, it's actually a very renowned and powerful system of medicine and healing and um, spiritual evolution that really unites um, science and spirituality really beautifully. Uh, and it's given rise to and contributed to um, many of the healing arts that we have around the world today, including herbalism, including aromatherapy. Actually, you know, we, we wouldn't even have aromatherapy and essential oils without it. So it's really important uh, to understand for anyone using essential oils or aromatherapy. Um, it's a much more philosophical art than modern healing practices. Uh, and it offers just a vast amount of wisdom in all areas of life, specifically those in regards to our human nature relationships. Um, and it gives us really awesome tools for mindfulness and meditational uh, perspective that can really help reveal the hidden dimensions of beauty and wisdom uh, of life and plants and human nature. Um, so you you know, you likely already know that aroma and the sense of smell, they have something very distinct that really sets them apart from all of our other senses, right? There's just always been some sort of magical or sacred or mystical association uh, with scent and how it um, interacts with our being or consciousness and even our body and mind. Um, and you can see it across all ancient teachings on aroma or perfumery or you know incense uh, in every culture. And maybe you've experienced this before um, you know, whether it was something really profound or uh, a subtle feeling, um, you know, that you got from a fragrance or oil or a flower that you um, inhaled deeply. You know, there's obviously something more going on here than just, you know, a nice, beautiful smell uh, or the medicine and healing power that goes with a certain aromatic plant. Um, it's just undeniable. And one of the uh, philosophies that resonates, that has resonated with me over the course of my plant path is from alchemy. Uh, so to keep things really simple here, cause you know, we could go off on a huge tangent for a long time. Um, there's three core principles of alchemy that we're all made of and uh, that plants are made of as well. And this is the belief that we all have a body, a spirit and a soul. Um, you know, we have our physical body, we have our spirit, which animates us, you know, sort of uni universal spirit with each, within each individual. And we have our unique soul essence of who we are as an individual. And it's the same with plants. Plants have a physical body or structure. They have a universal force that flows through all of them, a universal spirit, if you will. And then they each have their own unique essence or soul that, you know, helps define them as an individual from plant to plant. And these three principles are referred to as um, salt, which is the body aspect, you know, the physical. Mercury, which is uh, the spirit or the life force aspect. And sulfur, which is the soul aspect, you know, you, the unique consciousness of a plant. Um, now, though they relate and share some characteristics, uh, these terms aren't necessarily pertaining to the physical, you know, periodic table of of elements, you know, salt, mercury, and sulfur, they're much more uh, philosophic in nature than that. Um, 
But here's the important part for us uh, pertaining to aroma. So the sulfur or the soul of a plant is believed to be existing within its essential oils. Uh, alchemy is all about separation, you know, separating the parts from the whole, purifying them, and then bringing them back together to be more pure and potent, um, and also learning wisdom through that process, the, through different processes. Um, so in lab work with plants, alchemy uses distillation methods, um, you know, among many others to separate these three aspects of a plant. Uh, so it uses steam to distill a plant's essential oil from the plant body first. Um, and when making certain medicines like spagyrics, if you've heard of them, uh, spagyrics, we keep the plant body after that, after the distillation. And um, this gets fermented instead of, you know, throwing it away like most people do in modern herbalism with tinctures uh, or with essential oils because the spirit is still housed within that body. And through this process, um, what they call, it's what they call giving up the ghost um, and alcohol is produced. So, you know, all plants produce a type of alcohol when fermented. And this is the universal spirit of plants, which is also why alcohol is referred to as spirits since ancient times. Um, anyways, back to the sulfur or the soul aspect. So the essential oils that are distilled, um, you know, from the plants, these are thought of to be the actual soul of a plant, the soul essence of plants. So whether you use essential oils by themselves or you use um, raw aromatic plants of any kind, you know, as incense or topically, you're working with the soul aspect of plants when you're working with their aroma. And when you breathe in the aroma of a plant, you're entering a sort of direct communication with the plant's soul. And this is why so many cultures believe uh, the aromatic arts to be practices on the soul level. And um, on top of that, in ancient times, a lot of cultures believed that the human soul resides in the nostrils. So, you know, who's to say really, but this is a really interesting idea that would, you know, if it were so, it would really feed the belief that, you know, when we smell a plant, we're working on it uh, on a soul to soul level. And one more uh, really interesting thing that adds another layer to this that I've always uh, um, enjoyed the thought of is the ancient Hebrew word for spirit, which is ruach, also means to breathe in or to smell. You know, there's a rich ancient tradition in Israel, uh, reaches back to biblical times, different stories of offerings of incense to God, like at Solomon's temple, for example, uh, with the Ketoret incense offerings. Um, so, you know, spirit and, and smell and, and incense smoke goes, goes together and it has for, for thousands of years. But to put it simply, there's all these ancient traditions around the world that tie the spiritual to our sense of smell and to aromatic plants. And the tradition of alchemy really puts it all into perspective uh, in the most beautiful way for me. And um, I thought that I would just share this really simple and powerful teaching with you today. So the next time you burn incense or you smell an essential oil or maybe a live plant or flower, uh, you know, out in nature, take this thought with you and remember these three principles of alchemy. And it can really help take your work uh, with plants and people to a new level with new perspectives. So that's all I wanted to share today. I'm keep it short. Uh, but for those of you, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere, um, enjoy the transitions of the seasons. You know, this is my favorite time of year. And uh, I'm really excited to be outside more and also being inside more and nerding out in my library. So <laughs> have a good day and um, we'll talk to you soon and take care for now.